Hi, a lot of you have asked for some help on the series parallel circuits. Uh, I've made videos about solving circuits with series and ones with parallel. So this time, let's look at a series parallel circuit. I've already done part of this on the paper here, uh, illustrating how to go about this. So I won't explain what I've done here, so just for the sake of time. What it, this is our series parallel circuit that we start out with. And we have a battery 12 volts. We have R1, which is in series with everything else. R1 is 1K ohm, and then we have two resistors in parallel, R2 and R3, which is our 2K for R2 and 4K for R3. So the current, conventional current, flows through R1, splits, some of it goes through R1, I'm sorry, all of it goes through R1, and then some of it splits and goes through R2, and the rest goes through R3, and then recombines and goes back into the battery. Well, now, we really can't deal with such a complicated circuit like this. I mean, it doesn't look that complicated, does it? But when you, when you start to calculate the voltages and such, you, get, um, you come up with things like answers that don't make sense. And when you, when you uh, check them, they're, re they're not right because probably you're going to use the wrong voltages and so forth. You might assume, for example, the voltage across R2 is 12 volts. Well, it's not. As this circuit has fl current flowing through it, there's going to be a voltage drop across R1. So you can't simply use 12 volts for the voltage across R2 and R3, and for that matter, R1 either. It's not 12 volts, not like a parallel circuit. So it's a little bit more complicated. The way we approach this problem is to simplify the circuit and convert it into a series circuit. In other words, we can uh, take these two resistors here that are connected in parallel and R2 and R3 and combine them into a single resistor, which we could call RA and RA would represent, would be the equivalent of those two. And you can see how I calculated that here. I went, uh, used the product over sum formula. You could also use the reciprocal formula as well. But the product over sum formula is R2 times R3 divided by R2 plus R3. In other words, it's the product of the two divided by the sum. So we, we would usually say R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2, but that just means the first times the second divided by the first plus the second. Now we got we got to be careful to do the the uh, the operations in the correct order here. You know, in other words, I'm going to multiply two by four, that gives me eight, and then I'm going to add the two plus four, that gives me six. This is in kilo here, kilo ohms. Both of these, all these values are in kilo ohms, so my answer is going to be in kilo ohms. So eight divided by six gives me one and you know eight, uh, one and one third, or um, uh, one and two six kilo ohms. So I just call that 1.3 kilo ohms. So that's the resistance of RA, resistor A. The total resistance then would be, this is series circuit, we'd add the two resistors, the 1K and the 1.3K. So here we have that 1, 1K plus 1.3K ohms is 2.3K ohms. So that gives us our total resistance. And that would be the total resistance of the series parallel circuit also. So you see by simplifying it, we can work our way back. I mean, I guess you could even simplify it one more step and say that this is this could be simplified down to one single resistor and and a battery. That would be even one more step of simplification. But but this is sufficient to get us to where we need to go here. So I know how to handle a series circuit, or you know how to handle a series circuit because we've done those before. So you can calculate everything for the ser series circuit, then you can work your way back to do this series parallel circuit. And that's generally the strategy when you come up with a, a compli more complicated circuit like a series parallel circuit is you, is you work your way back. You, you might have to take two, you might have to make two different circuits like this or maybe three different, um, you might simplify it two times or three times depending on the complexity of the circuit and work your way back. And you solve the simpler one first, you solve everything in the simpler one and then you use the facts of the simpler one to help you with the more complicated one. So in this case I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to solve everything on the series circuit. So for example I figured out the resistance of RA here. I also wanted to find the total resistance which is those two in series so we simply add those two together R1, R1 plus R2 which would be 1K plus 1.3K gives us 2.3K ohms. So this circuit is 2.3K ohms and so would be the, the series parallel circuit. Once we find the total resistance then we can find the total current using Ohm's law that's voltage divided by resistance. In this case, that'd be 12 volts, the 12 volt battery, divided by 2.3 kilo ohms total resistance of the of the circuit gives us 5.22 milliampers. 
That's the current total or the current through the battery. That's also the current through R1 because R1 is in series with the battery. So whatever current's flowing through the battery is also flowing through R1. So that's why I was able to just come up with an answer for the current through R1 is 5.22 milliampers. Okay, now, now we get to a, a situation where we have a problem, and that's where we're trying to find the current of R2. Ohm's law says that the current is the voltage divided by the resistance, so the current through R2 would be the voltage of R2 across R2 divided by the resistance of R2. Well, we don't know the current through R2. It's not the current through R1. It's not the total current, because the current split into two, two, two paths. There's two separate current flows, one through R2 and one through R3. Uh, because there's less resistance in R2, we'd expect to have more current through R2 than we would R3, but there's going to be some flowing through both. So we don't know the currents, uh, and now we say, well, we can calculate it if we know the voltage across R2. Well, we don't know the voltage across R2 because we have a voltage drop across R1 and also one across R2 and R3. So we go back over to our series circuit here, and, well, we know the current flowing through this circuit, so we could find the voltages of all the parts of the series circuit. And so what I did here, you see, is I, f I first uh, I found the voltage across R1, and that's the current through R1 multiplied by the resistance of R1, and that gives us 5.22 volts. Make sure when you do these calculations you don't forget the scientific numbers or the, you know, your decimal point because I got milliamps here multiplied by kilo ohms so I just entered that into my scientific calculator um, I can show you that here real quick how I did that get a calculator out here and, and show you here's a scientific calculator and uh, what I would have done with that one to enter that into my calculator I would have typed in 5.22 uh, times 10 to the minus 3 and multiply that by uh, 1k ohm or just a thousand. I could enter that as 1e to the third, but it's just easy to enter 1,000. And that gives me 5.22. So that, let the calculator do the decimal point for you. If you have a, a simpler calculator, you might have typed in uh, 5.22 milliamps as 0 0.0052 and then multiplied that by 1,000. And that would give you the same answer, 5.2. Two. I guess I didn't type in the last two there, but okay. So that's my 5.22 volts for VR1. Now, what about VR2 and VR3? Well, a couple of ways we could approach that. One is to use Kirchhoff's law. Kirchhoff's law says that in a series circuit, the voltages across the parts of a series circuit add up to the total voltage. So that tells us right then that if we know the voltage across R1 here, in other words. If we were to put a, a voltmeter here, let's say right there, and connect it across uh, RA like that, that the voltage we're going to measure here is going to be, uh, we just calculated it to be, let's see here, 5.22 volts. Okay, so that's going to be the voltage across RA. What's going to be the voltage across no, that was R, that was R, R1. Excuse me. All right. Hate when that happens. So we don't know that voltage. We're going to find that voltage. We don't know that voltage yet. So that's what we want to find. But we know that that voltage is going to be added to the 5.22 volts, which would be across R1. So this one's going to, R1 is going to have the 5.22 volts across it. So we'd subtract that from 12 volts. So in other words, the voltage across R1 subtracted from um, 12 volts could give us that voltage. So that's one way we could do that. So if we bring my calculator back here real quick. is. So we've got uh, 12 volts minus 5.22 volts gives us 6.78 volts. 
Now the other way we could do it is to take the current that flows through um, RA and multiply it by the resistance of RA, that's this resistor right here, and that would give us the, the same answer, 6.78 volts. So that's what I put in there, 6.78 volts. Now, then uh, we know the voltage of that. So that's our voltage across R2 and R3, these two right here. And now that we know the voltages, you see, now we can find the currents. We know that the, the currents of through R2 would be the voltage across R2 divided by the resistance of R2. So that would be, we take that same value, 6.78. Uh, seven eight six volts divided by the resistance of R2 which is 2 K ohms and that would give us <clears throat> our calculator so divide that by 2 3.39 volts, or 3.39, excuse me, milliampers. 3.39 milliampers. Now I just made a mistake there, didn't I? I did. I took. I said two. It's not two. It's 2,000. So you've got to be careful about that. So let's bring that back here and do that again. Six. Six point seven eight six divided by 2,000, not 2 because it's 2 kilo ohms. Got to make, make that mistake and that, that's a bad one. So that gives us the current. There we go. 0 0.003393. That's amperes. So that gives us 3.393 amperes. 3.393, uh, not amperes, milliampers. Milliampers. That's the current of R3. And then the same thing would be true of R3. That would be 6.6786 volts divided by, in this case, that case, 4K ohms. And so we're doing that on our calculator again. This time we go 6.78 six divided by four thousand gives us point zero zero one seven we'll round that off to so that'd be about one point seven milliampers point seven milliampers now if we add those two together does that equal five point two two looks like it does yeah, that would be 5.22. Just looking at those two numbers, you can tell they'd add up. So that checks out okay. As far as, in other words, these two these two currents here would equal this current added together. So that looks good. And then you would we'd, we'd be finding the powers and and um, the power through through of uh, uh, dissipated by R1 would be the current through R R1 multiplied by the resist by the voltage across R1 and we know what those are so I'll leave that up to you to figure that out. So anyway, I hope that helps you with this uh, through these series parallel circuits. That's kind of the approach you take is to simplify things, not try to take it all in one big chunk. All right, see you later.